Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash pro revenge, where in today's episode, OP's dad shatters mom's life by abandoning a 30 year marriage, guys, for another woman. And OP decides to destroy him. Guys, the stories today are super satisfying, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Subscribe if you haven't. An email link will be posted right here for story submissions. So I'm a young project manager for an unlimited commercial general contractor. I picked up a hammer for the first time six years ago with no prior experience. I was raised in believing if you worked hard and applied yourself, you will be successful. For two years, I learned everything I could in the construction industry. I took my work home with me and studied on my own time to better myself. For that, I was promoted to foreman. I was brought in to take over a small project at a 12 building, 120 unit condo complex. It started small and the board of directors for the HOA told me they loved my professionalism, my work ethic, and my ability to complete projects on time and under budget. We won a big contract because of that small project, and that was three years ago. I've since taken over the job of foreman, superintendent, and project manager. I do the billing, meetings with engineers and board members, scheduling, takeoff, material ordering, and I even train the subs on application of new products because we don't have enough mid-management. The project just passed $2.7 million. We got a bid request for another $3 million job in the same complex. All the while, the board of directors is telling me how appreciative they are and how they've gone through five different contractors in the years before committing to my company because of my management and quality of work. This boosted my confidence and I went to the owners asking for the raise they promised me a year ago for my production. The owners told me, the experience you're gaining is far more valuable. We won't pay you anymore. I said, you're right. I then put my resume on public, got contacted by a headhunter, and just accepted an offer this week for $80,000 a year salary, plus full benefits, 28 days PTO including holidays, and I'm in the office now. I also get a 100% match in my 401k for the first three years of my employment plus quarterly bonus programs. The company I'm with now only pays me $40,000, and that's it, none of the above listed benefits. The final nail in the coffin was when the owners bragged about how much my project made in a company meeting, and then denied me a Christmas bonus. I then laid the offer on their desk Friday and watched their jaws hit the floor. I then told the HOA president of the project that I'm resigning when they couldn't match my offer. His eyes got big, and he requested a meeting with the owners and expressed serious concern about moving forward with the project without my involvement. Now, they don't have anyone to replace me, and I'm not gonna lie. It does feel good to hurt their pockets when I gave them everything I had for six years and only asked for a median project manager salary. F those greedy bastards. Guys, it sucks that a lot of bosses don't know the worth of their employees until they're gone. Like the work that OP was doing was worth way more than a measly $40,000 a year. He had so many responsibilities. And hey, at least in this case, the experience the owners gain will be far more valuable than a $3 million contract, right? Maybe they'll learn to treat future employees better. So here's the basic. When I was a kid, my dad was in the service, US Navy. So we moved around a lot. Because of this, I was always the new kid over and over again, meaning I was constantly the target to get picked on. This made me fairly introverted and distrusting of other people by nature. In the waning years of my father's military career, he decided that he would take his family back home to his hometown and do some recruiting until he retired. So away we went, to the family farm built by my great-grandfather. Now, if anyone's ever found themselves moving to a small town suddenly, then you're well aware of what I mean when I say the locals were very small-town-minded. Now, for those of you who don't know, the small town mentality is basically this. If you're not from there, born and raised, then you don't belong there. A lot of small town citizens are closed off and want nothing to do with outsiders. So there I was, not only the new kid, but I was introverted and an outsider, a magnet for those who wanted to pick on others. For the most part, I tried not to let it get to me, but I did have some bad days and I got into a few fights. Always in self-defense though. And eventually, as people grew up, most of the other kids matured out of the pick on other stage and began to just leave me alone. This story is about a kid who we'll call Mike. You see, Mike was the only one who never seemed to grow out of doing that stuff. He would daily track me down and tell me how worthless I was. That I was just some dumb farm boy and would never amount to anything and I would always be a loser. He would walk up to me randomly and say things like, Hey, I know you're gonna be the one who shoots up this place someday, and when it ends with your death, I'll be the one cheering. The guy clearly had some issues. 
At one point, I arrived to school to find that he had painted the combination on my locker with toothpaste. A lot of weird stuff like that. Anyway, we get into our senior year of high school, and I have long since been doing my best to ignore him. His not being able to get a reaction out of me seemed to really upset him, and even his friends started saying that his seemingly need to find me every day to simply be a jerk was bordering on the creepy and obsessive. And then all of a sudden, the verbal abuse stopped one day, a couple of months from graduation. I assumed he had finally given up, but that wasn't the case. So a couple of weeks later, I walked to the end of our long driveway to catch the bus, and I found that our mailbox had been run over. Now I didn't think anything of it at the time, other than it must have been some drunk. I get home later that afternoon, take some photos of the damage, just in case, and then fix the mailbox. A new wooden post buried into the ground. The next morning, I go catch the school bus, and the mailbox again had been run over. I get home, take photos, repair it, do my chores, homework, relax, and again it happened the next day, and again the day after that. This went on for two weeks, only stopping on the weekend. My parents had reported the smashing of the mailbox, but there was no evidence as to who the culprit was, so nothing was done about it. I finally had enough of digging out the broken post and replacing it, so the revenge. I get up early on a Saturday and head to the end of the driveway. I then dig a 2 feet by 2 feet wide hole 6 feet straight down, and filled the hole with fresh cement. In the center, I placed a 10 foot section of the farm's cast iron water pipes, sunk 6 feet into the concrete. I filled the rest of the 10 foot cast iron pipe with concrete as well, and then mounted the mailbox on top. I then looked into how far from the road the mailbox needs to be for safety reasons, and then attached ample amounts of reflectors. So Monday morning comes and I notice the mailbox post has all sorts of scratches on it, but otherwise it's fine. I then get to my final class of the day when a friend of Mike's comes in. We'll call him Steve. Steve sees me and he freaks out saying, Hey, do you have any idea what you did to Mike's car? I say to him, I didn't do anything to Mike's car, I don't even know what it looks like. Steve says, your little stunt with a mailbox, it totaled it. He had to get it towed into town at 5am this morning. He's gonna sue you. I then say to him, okay, but are you aware that deliberately hitting and damaging a mailbox is a federal offense? Steve then asked, what are you talking about? Now, you don't actually own your mailbox. I tell him, legally it belongs to the post office, so destroying a mailbox is destroying government property, making it a federal offense. At that, Steve says, so what? He'll get a little fine, but you will pay. I tell him, no, it's actually a $250,000 fine, or up to three years in prison per offense for vandalizing a mailbox. And since it happened 10 times in the last two weeks, that translates to either a $2.5 million fine or up to 30 years in prison. Hearing that, Steve just stares at me for a moment and then storms out. At that point, I pull up the federal statute on the computer I was working on, and Mike comes in insisting that I'm making that whole thing up. So I show him the law, and he freezes. I then tell him, you can take me to court, and I might have to pay a small fine, and maybe even tear down the mailbox, but your life would be over. Mike then says to me, maybe, but you can't prove I did it 10 times. I tell him, actually, I took photos of the damage, so I can prove it was at least 10 times. But even if I couldn't, $250,000 is still a lot of money. Much more than your car is worth, I'm sure. And would you really bankrupt yourself or even get yourself sent to prison to force me to pay you a grand or two for your car? Mike then storms out of the classroom and he never bothered me again. Now the best part was the domino effect this created. You see, Mike didn't have enough credits to graduate on time. He wasted too much time trying to be a Dr. Phil case, I guess. I heard through the small town grapevine that he was eventually shunted over to adult programs by the school. Without his car, which was totaled, and unable to afford another one, he couldn't get to classes, and was eventually tossed out of school due to attendance problems. Without a diploma or GED, he couldn't even get into a community college, nor find proper work. Not having access to gainful employment left him living with his mother in a trailer, living off her and the occasional odd job he gets. Mike, if you're out there reading this, I only have one real question. Just how did that mailbox taste? Guys, I've said this many times and I'll say it again. You play dumb games, you win stupid prizes. Like there's so many stories where people destroy other people's mailboxes on purpose and I really don't get it. I also don't get Mike's little obsession with OP either and he definitely got everything he deserved. 
So I used to work at a gas station and the job was good. The manager was awesome. She was the sweetest woman ever. She left and the manager after was just as awesome. The assistant manager on the other hand was something else. Let's call him Richard. He was 50 years old. Now Richard was known to be very hostile and really creepy when not around the manager. He'd make advances on young female workers and offer raises in return for favors. He'd also make us try to do his load of the work and blamed us for being lazy when we couldn't do it and our jobs fast enough. My coworkers and I had brought the situation to the higher-ups numerous times, and as much as she wanted us to be heard, Angel, my manager, couldn't do anything. And it came to a boiling point two months down the line on my end. So a little fact about me. I'm timid, I'm autistic, and I get very, very stressed when someone threatens me with my life. I get very sick to my core and lack of breathing if I have to deal with that, and I use that to my advantage. So on the shift I was supposed to be working that day, I had asked my friend if I could borrow his speaker to listen to music. My manager said as long as I can do my job behind the register and my friend was okay with it, I can listen to music. Everything was fine, and then a shift change happened and Richard came in. So Richard sees me listening to my music, and then he asked me to play his music from his phone on the speaker. I said no, the speaker's mine for the next couple of days, and I don't want to be held responsible for any damage. He then whispers under his breath for me to hear, but quiet enough for the cameras to not pick up. I have a knife, you know. Might be best to give me what I want. And in that very moment, I came up with a way to end his BS once and for all. I yelled at him loud enough so the cameras can pick up. Hey, why are you threatening me with a knife? Now I kind of had a mixture of fear and determination to make this man suffer for me and my co-workers verbal abuse and sexual harassment for the past couple of months. He then backs away and says, hey, 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 it was just a joke, chill out. I knew I had to do something if I wanted him gone, so I said, a joke, huh? Here's a good joke, have fun working alone, I quit. I then walked out, called my mom, explained the situation in tears, and then she told me to call the manager to explain the situation. I then told her that I knew he had a knife on him because he was often flipping his pocket knife in and out while sitting in his office. My mom and I had a talk with my manager, and I wound up in a situation with the manager, the branch manager, and the district manager asking about what happened. I explained it again, calmer now, in full detail. They then asked if I was okay. I told them, no, I have a guy who's been sexually harassing my other coworkers, verbally assaulting me and others, and then he threatens me for saying no to using a speaker. I got threatened with a knife. I do not feel safe with him around. They then asked me about the speaker, and I called my friend Cross, and he confirmed that I asked to borrow the speaker, and backed me up with what the assistant manager has done in the past. At that point, the police were called. They checked the cameras and heard me yelling about the knife. He then got fired and arrested, when they found out he was threatening physical harm to a disabled person for sexual harassment, sexual assault, and for carrying an unauthorized concealed weapon. He wanted a speaker, so he got a speaker. A few speakers on a podium, who put his ass in jail about a week after. All I can say is well played, OP. Revenge and justice, all in one. Guys, I hate when people use positions of power to abuse employees. And OP's quick thinking helped put a bad apple in jail. What a freaking creep. Midway through my senior year at college, my father got the privilege of opening the very first plant in China, when his company was granted permission to expand there. He was getting everything, and I mean everything. Business class on airfare, a penthouse, recognition in the company for being effectively in charge of the project, and he also got to mingle with the higher-ups in the company. The works. This was exciting news for him because he was close to retirement and it seemed that his hard work was finally paying off. My mom was happy because now with my younger brother starting college and me about to graduate, she and her husband of over 30 years could finally enjoy their empty nest. She often called my father her soulmate and wanted to spend their golden years together. However, things turned upside down in less than a year. Now maybe the power went to his head, maybe he was overwhelmed and stressed out with having to start a new life in a new country. Or maybe his position of power with his salary attracted a temptress. I have no clue. It could have also been his ugly soul finally coming to light. I finished my senior year around Christmas time, only to see my father pack his bags and leave us, saying he didn't want to be married to my mom anymore, and he was seeing someone else. Now, to say the rug had been pulled out from under our feet was an understatement. It was like everything we'd ever known had imploded. My father left us shortly before Christmas, and we started putting the pieces back together. I start working two jobs, and often slip money into my mom's wallet because I was terrified my father would cut off our money. 
It was during this time that we started therapy, and all three of us came to the realization that this man had been emotionally, verbally, and financially abusing us for years. It's something I'm still trying to work through, and I doubt I'll ever fully recover. So come springtime, my father had a change of heart. He contacted us and started making amends. Something in me was suspicious though, and I held back because I was happy because mom was happy. Mom had lost a lot of weight, she was crying constantly, and she was all in all miserable. He returned home for a week vacation and then proposed a third honeymoon, if you will. He and mom would return to China to work things out. My brother and I were staying back home as we were both busy with work and school. Mom and dad left us with some important numbers to call just in case of an emergency, and also the email address of my father's immediate supervisor, whom I'll call Stan. They then left for China, and it seemed that everything would work out. Two weeks later, it was time for our weekly Skype session. The first week had been fine, and my brother and I were expecting to hear another good report. Instead of that, mom was alone. Her eyes were swollen, and her face was red. I immediately went into mama bear mode, and asked my mom in a voice that probably scared my brother and mom, saying, What happened? Mom was crying. She tells us that after making the rounds with the high ups my father had packed his bags, told her that he was going to Shanghai for two weeks with his girlfriend, and then told mom, I want you gone by the time I get back. At this, mom was floored, and she asked him, how? My father tells her, I don't care how, just get out. He then left my mother in the penthouse with little food, barely any money, and no way to navigate through a country where she didn't speak the language or know how to get away home. She then said to me, I think he was just using me to look good at work. Everyone was saying they were glad that we were working out our problems. Now when I heard that, I was furious. I'm fiercely protective of my family and friends. You can do whatever you want to me, but make any of my family members or friends cry and you'll learn why it's a bad idea to pick on them. Now as much as I wanted to fly to China, track down my father and his mistress, and make them feel every ounce of pain that my mom was feeling, I knew that wasn't a smart or practical idea. Instead, I'd have to embarrass him so that everybody knew what a scumbag he was. And then an idea comes to mind. After getting the information I need from mom and calming her down, I worked on the first part of my plan, bringing mom home. Now I didn't have any money, nor did I have a visa to visit. However, I did have Stan's email. I wrote a lengthy email to Stan, crying over the keyboard as I drafted it. I explained who I was, what was going on, and that I was worried for mom. I asked him to please help me find a way to reach mom and bring her home. I promised him that I would repay every penny, even if it took the rest of my life. I added my personal email and phone number as a finishing touch and asked him to contact me if he had any questions. After making sure it was perfect, I sent it off along with a prayer that it would work. Stan never did return my email, but 24 hours later, mom was safely home. I learned that Stan had gotten in contact with my mom within an hour of me sending the email, verified everything that happened, and gotten her home on the first flight. I sent him another email thanking him for helping us, and told him that I would repay the expense when I could. That time, he did respond, and all he said was, It's alright. Thank you though. Now that was the extent of our conversation, but I'm very grateful to him for helping mom, out of his own pocket, if I'm not mistaken. When mom got home, it sunk in for us that the marriage was truly over, and we made plans to move on. They were divorced within a year, and we moved to Florida for a fresh start, maybe a few years later. Mom found the new love of her life, who I call my stepdad. She's also working her dream job, something that never would have happened under my father. She's happier than I've seen her in a long time. As time passed, I actually forgot about the email until recently, when mom and I were talking about Stan, that she revealed what happened. Now, I was just hoping to humiliate my father. Instead, my email launches massive legal and financial headaches for my father. So right after helping my mom get home, Stan decided that my father's behavior was worrying, and started an investigation into my father. What he learned was mind-blowing. Not only was his mistress one of his subordinates, but he had another mistress on the side, both of whom he was showering with expensive gifts and vacations, to name a few. But that wasn't the topper. The topper was evidence that my father might have been embezzling money from the company during his time in China. However, for reasons I don't know, criminal charges were out of the question. What they did do to him was even worse. My father was immediately demoted and sent home. His name was removed from the factory he had built and his mistresses were fired. Now, with this company, most of the promotions come from not what you know, but who you know. And since Stan knows many people, eventually my father was forced to retire early, before they fired him. He decided he had been discriminated against, and tried to sue the company for unlawful termination. However, the evidence against him was overwhelming, and he lost. 
Now he's disgraced. He's hated by nearly everyone. And he's got limited contact with family and friends. He's still convinced that he's an innocent victim and that time will prove him right. But everybody knows the truth. And do I feel guilty about helping bring down my father? No. Guys, that was a top-notch revenge, for sure. And dad's a scumbag, and he deserves it all. Like, bringing his wife to a foreign country to abandon her, leaving her with almost no money after a 30-year marriage, guys. Like, how can someone be that cold? And I'm glad justice was served. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash pro revenge. Guys, I hope you found this story super satisfying today, as I sure as heck did. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I'll post it right here. A snobby Karen attacks OP when he refuses to give up his seat on a bus because her feet hurt. Guys, it's such a crazy story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.